Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and today we're going to look back at the big match of the Gathering tournaments from the weekend. There was a lot going on, a lot of events to talk about. We'll be looking at top eights as well as some of the deck lists, and we're going to cover standard, pioneer, as well as modern today. Quick reminder though, before we get started, if you go to flipsidegaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. And right now, they do have Theros Beyond Death singles on the website, so if you're looking to pick up some cards, you might want to check it out, hopefully save a little cash. And when you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, this weekend we had not one, but two of these players tour events. One was in Brussels, that's the one you see on the screen right now. The other one in Nagoya, which we'll get to in a few moments. They consisted of two different types of gameplay. One was Theros Beyond Death Limited, and the other was Pioneer. So what you see on the screen right now are your top eight players from this event and the Pioneer decks that they were running. Keep in mind, though, the Pioneer decks could have been propped up just a little bit if the player did really well in the Theros rounds, or vice versa in some cases. So here is your top eight. First place, Salt Eye Delirium. Second place, Demir Inverter. Third place, Lotus Breach. Fourth place, Niv to Light. Fifth place, Band Spirits. Sixth place, Mono Red Aggro. Seventh place, Mono Black Aggro. And eighth place was another copy of Band Spirits. Today we're going to look at deck lists that were transformed in some way from cards that are in Theros Beyond Death. So we won't look at all the deck lists, for example, Banned Spirits, as well as Mono Red Aggro. They haven't changed with any of the new cards from the previous weeks, but they are very good decks and very competitive. So let's go ahead and look at that first place Salt Eye Delirium deck. And here is that deck list. Now you're going to notice there's not a lot of influence here from Theros Beyond Death. One card we'll look at it in just a second. And if you've been following Salt Eye Delirium in the Pioneer format, this isn't going to look too surprising to you. This is a deck that's evolved pretty naturally over the last few weeks. But what is that card from Theros Beyond Death? It's a big one, Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath, and there are four copies in the main. Second place was Demir Inverter, and get used to this deck. There's going to be a lot of people playing it going forward. Now, this one, unlike the previous deck and a lot of the other ones we're going to talk about today, this was a surprise going into the weekend. This deck came out of nowhere, and it did fantastic, not in just this event, but in others too. Wait till you see some of the other top eights in just a moment. So basically what makes this possible is Thassa's Oracle, which we'll see in just a second. Four copies in the main. Four copies of Inverter of Truth, that's where it gets the name from. And of course, Inverter of Truth is a very economical flyer, but the drawback is you have to exile your library and then shuffle your graveyard and that becomes your library. Well, that's not much of a drawback with Thassa's Oracle, right? This is a combo deck that a lot of people are comparing to Splinter Twin because it's so explosive. In the main deck, you're going to find Thassa's Oracle, like we mentioned, and also Omen of the Sea. This card saw a lot of play this weekend, too. Now, this deck wasn't doing it, but some are running copies of Ashiok Nightmare Muse, either in the main or sideboard. Third place was Lotus Breach. Now, if you've been playing Pioneer, you're pretty familiar with, like, the Lotus Storm decks that have been around. There's been different variations on them. Ever since we got Underworld Breach, though, this particular version of the deck seems to be leading the pack. I don't think that's too surprising if you watch the results from the previous week's tournaments. But let's see what's here from Theros Beyond Death. Aside from Underworld Breach, you also have Thassa's Oracle, of course. And there's another copy of Underworld Breach in the sideboard. Fourth place is a deck that's been very popular over the last about three or four weeks now, Niv to Light. Doesn't necessarily have a lot of new contributions from Theros Beyond Death. It's just a very solid deck and will continue to be. As far as the new set goes, though, two copies of Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath in the main. Seventh place, we had Mono Black Aggro, and this has been another deck that has been performing extremely well in the format, really ever since the beginning. But there are some new cards that you'll find in this one. In the main, Drag to the Underworld. In the sideboard, Agonizing Remorse. And in some sideboards, you're even seeing Shadow Spear. Okay, let's move on now to Nagoya, and same type of event, but this time you can see the results are a little different. Here's the top eight players and what decks they were playing for Pioneer. First place, Banned Spirits. Second place, Sram Auras. Third place, fourth place, fifth place, sixth place, seventh place, Demir Inverter. Eighth place, Mono Black Vampires. So, will Demir Inverter catch a banning at some point? Maybe, but I do think they'll give it a little time to see if the meta can catch up with it. Like I said, this was a surprise to players this weekend, so we'll have to see how the meta will adjust for it. Here's the second place, Sram Auras deck, and this is actually pretty unique. It has a number of cards from Theros Beyond Death. In fact, this deck really couldn't exist without the new set. 
So of course the deck is going to run four copies of Sram Senior Edificer, which you see here. But let's take a look at the cards from Theros Beyond Death. You have Alcide of Life's Bounty, Ephemia the Cacophony, Hateful Idolin, Karametra's Blessing, and Sentinel's Eyes. Mono Black Vampires came in 8th place, which does have some similarities to Mono Black Aggro, but overall it is a very different deck. It does focus more on that vampire tribe. And this deck list only has one card from Theros Beyond Death in it. It's just one copy in the sideboard of Drag to the Underworld. Okay, let's move on to the Star City Games Team Open, which took place in Richmond this weekend. We're going to stick with Pioneer and look at the Pioneer portion of the event first. Now, in this tournament, the teams were playing three different formats. They were playing Pioneer, Standard, and Modern. So you could have a situation where maybe, again, you had a weak deck in one of those categories that got propped up by two stronger decks. Just keep that in mind. But here's what the top eight teams are playing when it comes to Pioneer. First place, second place, third place, fourth place, sixth place, Demir Inverter. Fifth place went to Mono Red Aggro, seventh place Simic Ramp, and eighth place is it in Soul. Again, we're just going to look at decks that we haven't previously looked at that do have cards from Theros Beyond Death, so let's see what's out there. Seventh place team was running Simic Ramp, and the Ramp decks in this format have been very successful. The big one for a while was Mono Green Ramp, but now Simic Ramp is kind of the one to beat. There are some definite advantages to adding a little blue here, one of which is a new card from Theros Beyond Death. That's the Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath again, and also Wolf Willow Haven is in the main. The 8th place team was running a tried and true deck, is it in Soul? This deck has been doing really well in the Pioneer format for a while now, but there is a new card from Theros Beyond Death here in the main. Two copies of Shadow Spear. Okay, before we continue with the Richmond team open, I wanted to point out one more Pioneer tournament. This was the Star City Games Classic. Now, this tournament was just Pioneer, but it was a little bit smaller. We've already looked at the deck lists here that are containing new cards, but I'll go over the top eight quickly for you. First place, five color Niv Mizzet. Second place, Demir Inverter. Third place, as well as eighth place, Mono Red Aggro. Fourth place, Mono Black Aggro. Fifth place and seventh place, Azorius Spirits. Sixth place, Salti Delirium. Okay, back to the Star City Games Open, and this time, though, we're going to be talking about Standard. So here's your top eight again, and this is what those teams are running when it comes to Standard. First place, Azorius Control. Second place, fourth place, seventh place, eighth place, Team of Reclamation. Third place was John Sacrifice. Fifth place, Mono Red Aggro. Sixth place, Gruel Aggro. A little bit of variety here. A lot of Team of Reclamation in this particular top eight, but we'll also look at the classic in just a second, too, to see if that carried over. Okay, so if you want to know what the new standard meta is going to look like, well, this should give you some idea. So let's start looking at these lists. The first place team is running Azorius Control, fantastic deck, shaping up to be very good in this new meta. Dream Trawler, which we'll see in just a moment, is a great win condition for this type of deck. You already had a lot of big pieces in the format, like Narset, Teferi Time Raveler, Glass Casket, Absorb, but the new cards really brought this deck together. And here they are, Dream Trawler, like we mentioned, Shatter the Sky, The Birth of Miletus, Elspeth Conquers Death, Omen of the Sea, and Temple of Enlightenment. In the sideboard, you'll find Heliod's Intervention. Now, other successful copies of this deck were running these cards in the main, Elspeth's Sun's Nemesis, Archon of Sun's Grace, and Thassa's Intervention. And other copies of this deck are running these out of the sideboard, Elspeth's Sun's Nemesis, Archon of Sun's Grace, Shatter the Sky, and Whirlwind Denial. Second place team was running Team of Reclamation. There are some similarities here between this and the previous versions of Team of Reclamation. You're going to notice, of course, Wilderness Reclamation, four copies of that. Four copies of Growth Spiral, four copies of Expansion Explosion, but there are quite a few new cards here from Theros Beyond Death. Three copies in the main of Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath, the big card really of the weekend, I think. Storm's Wrath, Thassa's Intervention, Omen of the Sea, and Temple of Abandon. Some of the other successful variations of this deck were running Thirst for Meaning in the main. Third place was John Sacrifice. Now, this hasn't changed that much. Three copies of Creval Faker's King here in the main. You got your four Cauldron Familiars. Of course, you're going to have your four Witches' Ovens. You probably feel like you've seen this movie before, and you kind of have, but there is a new card here from Theros Beyond Death. In the main, there are three copies of Agonizing Remorse, and there's one copy in the side. Fifth place team was running Mono Red Aggro, and this is feeling like a new variation on Mono Red Aggro, a little more reminiscent of what we were seeing a couple seasons ago. Not so much that Cavalcade of Calamity build, as you can see, there's four copies of Runaway Steamkin here in the main, kind of like the old school Mono Red Aggro deck, right? But on top of that, you're seeing newer cards too, like Ember Cleave, four copies of that in the main, four copies of Bone Crusher Giant. What do you get here from Theros Beyond Death? In the main, you get four copies of Annex Hardened in the Forge, and you get two copies of Phoenix of Ash. In the sideboard, you get the other two copies of Phoenix of Ash. 
Sixth place team was running Grill Aggro, and if you think this is just the mono red aggro deck with a little green splashed in, that's not really the case. Yes, there's similarities. Three copies of Embercleave you see here in the main, the other deck had four. Four copies of Bone Crusher Giant here. But look what you get from the green. Grill Spellbreaker, Lovestruck Beast, Paradise Druid, Pelt Collector, so on and so forth. Even four copies of Questing Beast there in the main. Two Vivian Arcbow Rangers show up. This general build has actually already seen success in Standard last season. Theros Beyond Death brings us Temple of Abandon, in the sideboard Phoenix of Ash, and the Acroan War. Before we do leave Standard though, I did want to show you the top 8 of the Star City Games Classic event. Again, this was a smaller tournament, but the players only played Standard here. First place, 6th place, 8th place, Azori's Control. 2nd place, as well as 5th place, Mono Red Aggro. 3rd place and 4th place was Simic Ramp. 7th place was Teamer Reclamation. So Teamer Reclamation was not as dominant here as it was in the other tournament. Let's look at that third place Simic Ramp deck. We knew these were going to be good because they were good last season and they still have so many strong pieces like Agent of Treachery, Brazen Borrower, Cavalier of Gals, Cavalier of Thorns, three copies of Hydrate Crisis in the main. But what do we get here from the new set? Thassa Deep Dwelling is in the main as well as Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath. Mystic Repeal is in the sideboard. And some decks are running Wolf Willow Haven in the main as well. Okay, on to Modern with the last section of that Star City Games team open. These are the Modern decks those teams were playing. And the Modern format obviously has been changing a lot with the recent bannings. So we are starting to see a new meta evolve here. Again, we'll be looking at some of the deck lists here, the ones that do have cards from Theros Beyond Death. Okay, first place, Demir Wurza. Second place, Amulet Titan. That also came in fourth place and seventh place. Golgari Yogmoth came in third place. Heliod Company came in fifth place. Jun came in 6th place, and Charge Tron came in 8th place. Here's the 2nd place team's Amulet Titan deck, and yeah, this isn't going to look vastly different to you if you're familiar with Amulet Titan, but there is a card from Theros Beyond Death that is in here and is now consistently in these builds. This deck is running 4 copies of Dryad of the Elysian Grove in the main. The 5th place team was playing Heliod Company, and okay, this is a Collected Company deck at heart. You see 4 copies of Collected Company right there in the main. But the big difference is the four copies of Heliod Sun Crowns, which we'll look at in just a second in the main as well. Now that card combos with the two copies of Walking Ballista that you see there too. And Heliod Sun Crown is the only card from the new set here, but it does make a difference. Sixth place team was playing good old Jund. The core pieces that you still see here are things like Tarmogoyf and Scavenging Ooze, Bloodbraid Elf, Ren and Six, Liliana of the Vale. But we do get a card from Theros Beyond Death in here. Two copies of Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. And we'll round things out with the Modern Classic, which of course is a smaller event, but the players here were only playing Modern. First and second place, Mono Red Prowess. Third place was Golgari Yogmoth. Fourth place, Azorius Control. Fifth place just says Wurza, but it actually was Demir Wurza. Sixth place and seventh place was Amulet Titan. And eighth place was Grixis Death Shadow. One deck we'll take a look at here, and it's Azorius Control. You're going to find Jace the Mind Sculptor here, and our set shows up. Big Teferi, Little Teferi, all the usual suspects. But hiding in the sideboard, one copy of Elspeth's Son's Nemesis. Okay, that wraps up our look at the tournaments from this past weekend, and hopefully you have a good idea now of which cards from Theros Beyond Death are creating the largest impact. Until next time, though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.